Last year I made it my mission to feet search the entirety of Arthurian legend. I spend months upon months reading every single story, prose, romance and cycle I could get my hands on. And now in 2023, nearly a full year since I began, I have completed my research. Kind of. To be honest, there are two gigantic holes in my research that I could not fill because I'm not going to spend $200 per volume to buy the translations on Amazon, and I don't live anywhere near one of the few libraries holding the books. As a result, I do not have the ability to go over either of the complete Vulgate or post-Vulgate cycles. However, to my knowledge, a majority of the events within these stories are retold within Thomas Mallory's Le Morte di Arthur. And in fact, the one solid portion of the Vulgate cycle I could get my hands on, the actual Grail quest, was very, very close to the Mallory telling. So I'm just going to accept this hole and I hope the massive amount of ground I've covered otherwise will be enough. I stopped my research at the 16th century at the end of the medieval era as I thought that anything beyond that point kind of lost the spirit of the stories and just didn't feel in line with the traditional matter of Britain anymore. And I have to point this out because technically the matter of Britain spans all the way to modern day. So if I was to completely do everything with King Arthur, I would have to include fate and shit and stuff like that and Marvel comics, no. As a result of this research, I planned three power scaling videos. Today we're going to be talking about Merlin, the next one will be talking about King Arthur himself, and the following one after that will be about the Knights of the Round Table. The reason I'm tackling Merlin first is simple. His scaling is a little bit different to the others as it's just different stuff, so I don't need to talk about the same points in later videos, and I feel like he's a cool character who is somewhat misunderstood by a lot of people and it, it's going to be quite different. So let's start with a history lesson. Merlin himself as he is known does not appear for quite a while in Arthurian literature. He first appeared within Geoffrey of Monmouth's Libellus Merini. You're going to have to just trust the pronunciations are going to be wrong. The first text that is not in Welsh to discuss the figure. And I have to say that because in Welsh there is a different figure known as Myrdin. It's generally accepted that Merlin is a fusion of two earlier Britain prophets with no connection to King Arthur. Those are Merdin Willet and Ambrosius Aurelianus. Specifically though, Myrdin. Myrdin. Ambrosius was definitely important, but he was actually adapted still into Arthurian legend as technically Arthur's uncle. Myrdin's role, notably with King Vortigern, was converted into a role held traditionally by Merlin. Now you might have noticed I referred to these figures as prophets and not wizards. And that is because Merlin is primarily not a wizard or a magician, but a prophet with a host of other supernatural powers. Merlin's origin story as told in multiple different tellings actually paints him out to be an antichrist figure. He was called for by Vortigern indirectly when he was told to acquire a son born without a father. Merlin is the son of a human mother and an incubus, a medieval European sex fiend that is the male equivalent of the more well-known succubus, and in this case also a class of demon. He was born to undo all the good that Jesus did. If Jesus Christ was born to save mankind, conceived through the Holy Spirit so that the souls of men would not be lost, then Merlin would be born to return all those lost souls to hell, a virgin birth through a demon. However, this was thwarted when the baby was christened in the womb and we got Merlin. Merlin was at a young age extremely wise, even as a two year old he was able to defend his mother at court. He trained under the master Blaise, I think it's pronounced, and possesses many abilities. The main of these abilities is his supernatural prophetic knowledge, and this got him into a lot of hot water over the years, especially within his own story, Vita Merlini, where he even becomes a hermit out in the woods and abandons civilization. Personally, though these events are never mentioned, and neither is his wife or sister, I like to think of the events of Vita Merlini as a precursor to all of Arthurian legend, and the old man went through all this before returning to Uther Pendragon and Arthur and aiding them. Which leads me to have to say this, we will naturally have to be compositing stories that were often not made with each other in mind. So if you don't like that, I'm sorry, but it's what we have to do because Merlin will often do maybe one or two things per story at best. I want to get into abilities, but we'll start with just stats because I think it's a much less important element here and also quicker to talk about. We'll start with speed this time. Merlin's speed is only noted once. In Le Morte di Arthur, Merlin rode unto Arthur and two kings at such speed that it marveled those who witnessed it. There aren't many other things to compare this to, I will bring up speed feeds next time when we talk about Arthur, so I'll have to wait on that one, but this basically just means Merlin is a lot faster than people would expect, or faster than people move, 
in this world. In terms of power, well, Merlin's only feat of strength takes place in Vita Merlini, wherein he rips the horns out of a stag's head and one-taps the guy with them from distance. It's such a small, nonsensical feat, but I kind of love how out of nowhere it is. Just randomly, there's one moment where Merlin loses his mind and beast modes a guy. Magically, however, his power is far more impressive. You see, Merlin is directly stated multiple times to have taught Morgana Le Fay everything she knows. Morgan is an entity so powerful that some consider her a goddess, and while she doesn't have many specific feats of power, she is the only one character we can prove Merlin scales to, and he's the only character we can prove she scales to and back and forth. And her only direct feat, kind of, is this. In Le Morte di Arthur, King Mark requests that she, along with a few other witches, light all of the country of Britain on fire. While she does not do this, it's never stated that this would be out of her ability, and it's more likely that this is something she could have done with their aid. Now while she was going to need help, Morgan is very clearly the most powerful of them all. In fact, she eclipses every other witch other than maybe Nimue, who's not going to be involved in this. So it's not likely that they would have contributed too much. I'm willing to say that the amount of power that they would have contributed to this would be no more than the power gap that Merlin holds above Morgan. So I think the scaling is fair, and the feed is generally fine. When someone can't do a thing in these stories, they'll tend to mention it outright. To accomplish this feat, Morgan's power output would be in the ballpark of 88.86 megatons of TNT, more powerful than the most powerful nuke mankind has ever detonated. And Merlin would scale. That's a lot of power that I bet most people weren't expecting from the guy. But that's really all there is to say. Merlin is easily within the city range of power, and faster than any normal person should be able to move. But let's talk about powers, because this is where Merlin gets kind of fucky. So, if you're thinking to, if you're expecting some sort of Harry Potter-esque magical ability, don't, because it's fucky. So starting off, Merlin's most prominent ability is his ability to see the future. It is the one single consistent power across basically all things, his immense wisdom and clairvoyance. And you don't understand the sheer potency of this power until you know what he's done with it. Starting light, Merlin was able to know without anyone else in the world knowing that beneath the foundation of a building there were two dragons fighting it out. He was also able to deduce what they mean and what was around them. Without looking. He possessed supernatural knowledge of giant stones in advance that would one day become Stonehenge. He foresaw the arrival of Uther Pendragon and Aurelius Ambrosius. And he somehow, at a glance, was able to identify that a boy would die. And by that, I mean, to prove he could not see the future, a king and queen had a single boy dress up three times and ask Merlin how would he die. Merlin said a different death for each time. And they thought he was a fraud because he was saying that the same boy would die three different ways. But then, years later, the boy did die in all three ways at once. He knew the events occurring within another kingdom while he was in the woods nowhere near them. He could see the truth behind someone and their future at a simple glance. As I said, when he was only two years old, he was able to defend his mother in court, but he also knew more details about a judge's conception than the judge's own mother. He foresaw the fate of Battle of Tristan and Lancelot. He knew the fate of Sir Balin's sword in advance and he foresaw 300 total years of events with perfect accuracy. Merlin's knowledge is insane, and it even is stated to come directly from a spirit that convenes with him at all times. Of course, that's all fine and good, but that can't be it, right? Well... Merlin has what I call situational magic, where unless something matches a requirement, something will happen. Otherwise, he also has what I refer to as general magic cliches that Merlin probably helped popularize. These include Immortality, he is stated to have life eternal within Vita Merlini. Transfiguration, Merlin knows of magical remedies that can make people look like other people, which allowed Uther Pendragon to non-consensually conceive Arthur. Hmm. He also can do this without remedies in later stories, he was able to transform himself into both a 14 year old boy and an 80 year old man. Animal Control, Merlin's able to convene with animals, notably stags and wolves of which he had a pet one. Weight Control, okay this one's weird. In a lot of tellings, most notably to me, Brut, Merlin is directly noted to have made the stones of Stonehenge movable to bring them into where they are now. Brut is the clearest, saying that Merlin did something to the stones that the Knights of Britain could then move them because of. And yes, that is the clearest explanation I found in a story. Merlin basically just decided they can move them now. But if he affected the stones, then to me the most likely explanation is that he made the stones extremely light so that they could be moved. Spellbreaking. Merlin possesses the ability to break enchantments and magic, 
primarily a spell that held someone in place. Ironic given one of his fates in a different story is to be sealed under a stone that he can't free himself from. Dream Reading This one's vague. In Limor de Arthur, King Lot refers to Merlin as a dream reader, but nothing comes of it. But on the same, I guess, token as dreaming, sleep spells. Merlin possesses sleep spells. He was able to put King Pelinor to sleep and can do so for up to three hours, but potentially even more as the inferior Morgan was able to pull it off for six hours. Invisibility. Merlin was able to make Arthur invisible to King Pelinor. Vanishing and Teleportation In multiple occasions, Merlin is described as simply vanishing from sight in Le Morte de Arthur, even doing so while Sir Balin was looking directly at him, and he was able to vanish from where he was in Northern Wales to where Arthur was in England, with no indication that this took any lengthy span of time as no events occurred between him doing so. This is likely unrelated to the speed feat I mentioned, as Merlin's speed is directly noted within that feat, so Merlin is both really fast and can teleport, but the reason he was probably moving at those speeds earlier was because he was going with something, so he likely can only teleport himself, and I guess whatever he's wearing or holding. Finally though, let's get to Merlin's situation abilities. Merlin is able to create constructs and objects that have certain properties that will only take effect if criteria are met, or more accurately, if criteria are not met, these effects will occur. These include the Perilous Seat. A seed he created that is sat on by someone who is not the exceptional Knight Galahad will kill or injure whoever it is that is sitting on it through some means. It's also connected to the Round Table, which we don't know the abilities of, but is noted to have been empowered with all of Merlin's magic. So, you know, it's probably a table that can like teleport and turn invisible and roofy you, I guess. All the seeds of the Round Table also have supernatural properties. By means of an invisible hand traced on the back, they will push off whoever sits on the seat if they are not superior in every respect to the knight who last owned the seat. So only the knights who own that seat are able to sit on them. He created a bed that will make anyone who sleeps in it if they are not noble enough go mad. And he created a bridge that if you are not a good knight, lacking in treachery and villainy, is impossible to cross. But while that's all I was able to observe Merlin doing himself, it has to be brought up again he taught Morgan all of her magics, which from what I was able to gather are the following. Morgan was able to make herself and her horse look like a rock. She created a golden mantle that burns anyone who wears it to death very quickly. She can turn off enchantments. She can create a golden horn that will be unable to be drunk from any woman who is unfaithful. She put a five year enchantment on someone that boils them in scalding hot water eternally behind the tower's iron doors. Fuck. She created a plaster and remedies that can heal physical and mental wounds within a short span of time. She was able to alter Sir Birklax so that he could survive decapitation and become exceedingly strong. She's a necromancer. She created a copy of Excalibur and its sheath. She could fly through the air on strange wings, and she can seemingly teleport as well. He also taught Nimue all of her abilities. The Lady of the Lake who was likely responsible for the forging of Excalibur and its sheath, and can seal people in tombs, deprive you of your memories, and essentially mind control you giving Merlin, frankly, a huge portfolio of abilities, especially for a guy who has never fought once in his life. To make this clear, Merlin has never engaged in battle before, so his biggest weakness in a versus sense is a complete lack of combat experience, despite his immense wisdom. So that's the video. In summation, Merlin's power output puts him solidly into city level, and he's fast enough to amaze people with his movements. He possesses clairvoyance, divine knowledge, immortality, transformation, animal control, weight control, spell breaking, dream reading, sleep manipulation, invisibility, teleportation, situational death manipulation with the perilous seat type spells, madness inducement, and likely fire manipulation, slot detection, healing physically and mentally, enhancement and power bestowal, necromancy, flight, sealing, memory manipulation, and mind control. This video has simultaneously gotten more and less stuff than I expected when I finished my research. Um, but that would be how powerful Merlin is. Uh, I guess my final note, I've seen some people say that he is listed as having all the power of the devil, but I didn't quite find this quote myself in research, and I don't plan to power scale the devil of the Bible anytime soon. It's disrespectful and it's poor taste, really, and I also don't think it's necessary for this at all. Merlin's power being as it is here is enough for me, but there is plenty, and I do mean plenty, more to talk about in Arthurian legend. So come back next time when I tackle King Arthur, the biggest individual topic of individual in this whole cycle of videos that I will be dealing with. I'll see you guys then. Well, hey everyone, I guess this is the. Oh, my mic's fucked a bit, hold on. I guess this is the first of this year's, um, me doing this thing. Uh, my voice, as you can probably hear, is mostly recovered. 
Um, I'm still coughing every now and again, you know, it's still, it's still in effect, the, the virus, but I'm generally feeling better. Um, I guess, like, physically I'm still a bit, you know, sluggish, and uh, it, it, it can be hard to want to get up and move sometimes, or just like, I, maybe that's my laziness, but like, it just it doesn't feel comfortable moving too much, but um, still, gotta get videos out. Uh, and I've been wanting to do this for so long. Like I said, uh, 2022 is when I began research, and it's 2023, and I'm actually talking about it finally. Um, so yeah, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. This is the, I guess, the small one. I imagine both King Arthur and Knights of the Round Table going to be longer. Um, King Arthur's got more to him than Merlin, and the Knights of the Round Table's a bunch of characters. Um, so yeah. Uh, you guys can go smack into the description and go to my Patreon if you want to support me. Um, I want to I want to say something like maybe I'll use the money to get the Volgate cycle and post Volgate cycle, but God, it's so expensive. It's like it, it would cost like over a thousand, I think, to get both, and that's so much. And it would literally just be probably just an appendum to this. Like, by the way, here's a time uh, Merlin touched grass. Um, so yeah. Anyway, if you go to my Patreon, you will get uh, exclusive stuff. If I ever get around to putting more stuff up, I'm really sorry. Um, you know, virus haven't really had any me to do much, like, just in general. Um, but I'll try to get more Patreon stuff out soon. Uh, but yeah, let's let's get some of these things done. If you go to my Patreon, you can get my, pa you my Patreon only Discord, where you can make me say stupid shit. So let's see. Face me, challenger! Fall to the power of El Drago! Finally... A worthy opponent. Our battle will be legendary. I was going to include this one because I didn't tell James in advance. Uh, he's a great friend of mine that I was doing this video. He just, I just, the, the image of Merlin you've been seeing all video is the only thing I showed as like a hint to what this was. And he said, judging by the script, it's probably some Celtic Christian monk or druid. Merlin in Vita Molini is technically a druid. Um, He's like, he's out in the wilderness, he's like, he's like a nature sort of mage figure-esque prophet thing. Um, but he is also originated from Celtic origins, I guess what originated means. Um, and he is Christian. Christianity plays a huge part in, uh, Arthurian legend. And in case you're wondering, no, there's gonna be no, like, other biblical scaling. Just like there was no biblical scaling in this for the other videos. But, um, yeah, he... <laughs> He, he looked at the image and he was able, without knowing it was Merlin or what I was doing, he was able to basically correctly guess, yeah, this, this is a Celtic Christian, uh, druid. Oh, ho, ho, ho. oh, four-year-old child. I see that you're watching Paw Patrol. I just need you to know that even Yamcha solos that verse. Those dogs would get murdered. Chainsaw Man, more like Chainsaw Mid. This is Lord Megatron, and this is a message from the people. This is a demand for death battle to make Fulgor vs. Sector 2. This episode changed my life, and is long overdue for a tribute. How will death battle remaster a masterpiece, you may ask? Well, human worm, simple. It will be a gift to humanity, and transcend all of existence itself. Death battle, get it done. The Fitness Gram Pacer Test is a multi-stage aerobic capacity exercise that progressively gets more difficult as it continues. The 20 meter Pacer Test will begin in 30 seconds. Line up at the start. The running speed starts slowly, but gets faster each minute after you hear this signal. Ah! A single lap should be completed each time you hear this sound. Ah! Autobots? Remember to run in a straight line, and run as long as possible. The second time you fail to complete a lap before the sound, your test is over. The test will begin on the word start. On your mark, get ready, start. Roll out! Be not amused. Sir, this is the silliest moment of my life. Howdy, neighbor! Coco, it's warm! You look ridiculous. You will never climb to heaven with your hands full of penis. I... I kind of don't like that that's what we're ending on. Um... <laughs> <coughs> 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 I feel like it's fitting to end this video on a little bit of virus. <coughs> Alright, uh, bye guys, I hope you have a good one.